Gaming was a key driver for the adoption of the personal computer. And with 2.7 billion players worldwide, it could still play a critical role for the adoption of blockchain. But for blockchain to thrive in gaming, there's a few issues that need to be resolved. Blockchain game development is still far too complex, resource intensive, and quite expensive. And for Web3 games, they really need to be compatible or comparable in terms of performance with their counterparts in sort of the traditional gaming, both in terms of performance, gameplay, and graphics. Players, as well as creators, need to find a way that their voice can be heard, especially when it comes to those important decisions. And finally, smaller studios need to find alternative revenue streams in order sort of to cut this dependency they have with big publishers or studios. So this is how Ayuna helps developers. Firstly, you can connect any game built on Unreal Engine or Unity to substrate-based blockchains. And with a modular toolbox of, let's say, handy features, you can actually uh, have advanced blockchain features directly into your game. And you can achieve this while getting 300 milliseconds worth of latency without any compromise on privacy. Thirdly, it enables developers to launch their own game tokens, including customizable blockchain features, which is a way that which they can engage and get their community to participate from early on. And finally, built on the trust and security of Polkadot, you can customize your own game token and retain full sovereignty over your treasury. So Ayuna essentially is a single-purpose blockchain there to serve the gaming industry with full decentralization and no compromise on the user experience. But to be honest, I'm more interested to talk to you about games today. So I will let somebody else do the techno bubble another time. But I think now I'd want to talk about games. So hi, everybody. I'm Nicholas. And I'm here to tell you about our journey in building Battlemogs, our upcoming showcase game. It's a typical hero's journey. It's a story about Cedric, our hero, and how he found a home, an infrastructure, and a community for his Mogwais. Our tale begins back in 2013, where Boy plays Diablo 3, Boy gets distracted by cute Bitcoin graphics card, and the rest, as they say, is history. Now, Cedric, at that time, has a eureka moment and decides to build a game on the Bitcoin protocol. So by essentially um, using the Satoshi part of the transaction to encode logic, he creates a lottery. A few moments later... Now, a few moments later, our hero had forgotten that there's something called the Swiss law, which really doesn't allow for you to just build lotteries out of nothing. But this first experience introduced him to the world of blockchain and also in the world of the community around it. So, wounded a bit from his defeat, but still sort of undeterred, he decides to conquer the world of Hearthstone. So with a blind confidence of an aggressively average player, he sets out to become the best Hearthstone player in Switzerland. So days turn into nights, Swiss francs turn into loot boxes, I guess. And after tweaking pretty much every setting, blaming every keyboard, mouse, internet connection for his failure, he knew exactly what he needed to do. Cheat. OK, power up. So with the power of AI, he created Saberstone a famous heart on simulator which was designed with the sole purpose of making him legendary in the game. As you can imagine, it failed quite badly. Now, the reason for this was that although it was meant to make him legendary, it ended up being used by universities for their tournaments for their AI students. Now, Cedric was actually super proud about this. Or, you know, not really, but yeah, it worked for him. So, luckily, our hero, 
Cedric, was working in one of the most creative places on earth, a Swiss bank. Now, a big Swiss bank, but at the same time, he had spent most of the past five years on his side quests. Now, during one of those side quests, another wild mogwai, let's call him Andre, joined him on this quest. So now, equipped with his, uh, let's say, passion for gaming and game engines and the power of the blockchain, he goes on the journey to create battle mogs. Cedric has another eureka moment and decides to build battle mogs by forking Dash and changing the consensus algorithms to NeoScript. So, in a way, he created a full blockchain for one single game. A few moments later... A few moments later, this went horribly wrong. Our goal was to build a fun game with great gameplay, but we had an infrastructure which was crippling. Instead of working with the technology, we were really fighting against it. And with block times of about two minutes, it was really impossible to create a fluid gameplay and a fun user experience. And from 51% attacks to network surges, the idea of running your own bespoke blockchain for a single game proved to be pretty bad. So now we get, I guess, to the TED Talk moment, which is, bro, why are you using blockchain? Well, for us, the potential was all there. Players are already contributing both in terms of creativity and value to the gaming industry. Just think about the, the, the modding community and how they can breathe new life into games, for example, like Grand Theft Auto. So we wanted to build a game where the player is not just um, relegated to a passive consumer, but rather than an, act, rather than an active co-creator whose actions and items can have real value. So back then, we really had no idea sort of what this term would be. But today, this has evolved into something that we call an NFT. And NFTs are changing the landscape of gaming, of community-driven gaming. Now, NFTs essentially enable gamers to become both literally and metaphorically invested in their favorite games. Now, traditionally, for any game, there's three pillars. Unique visuals, an awesome gameplay, and a compelling story. So, in 2020, our heroes, illogically at this point, continued on their journey. Now, our hero had an attitude of, hey, I can build it better. Now, enter Substrate Bro, who basically shows our hero Cedric a new path. Within weeks, we were working to integrate Unity with Substrate. So finally for us, the Mogwais had found the layer one. Essentially, that was their breeding ground. Substrate enabled us to connect to the blockchain in a seamless way. No need for smart contracts, no new programming languages in order for us to care for. So we realized that this was not only a solution for battle mogs, because our SDK from Unity on Substrate could now be used by any developer in the .sama ecosystem. So integrating Unity gave us the opportunity to be able to have compelling or sort of unique visuals or rich visual environments for Web3 games. But let's be serious now. Gameplay trumps graphics anytime. Since the dawn of gaming, it's gameplay that drives the force forward. So, even if you think back at early games like Tetris or Lemmings, or even to newer games like Elder Scrolls, it's gameplay which drives gamers. So, for battle mogs, 10-second block times led to quite a few problems. Latency, as you can imagine, especially in online games, can be a big problem in terms of playability. So for us, we wanted something that would be faster. Now, Polkadot helped us to speed things up, but we went a step further by introducing trusted execution environments. 
or T's. Now, T's are small rectangular bags which you dip in tea, and that gives you about 300 milliseconds of speed. Now, a famous variation of them is obviously all gray. Now, if you ask the computer, it will show you that within that computer, within that trusted, within that trusted execution environment, we achieve the speed and the privacy that we need. If you want to learn more about trusted execution environments, you can check out Integrity's presentation tomorrow or watch Star Trek. So for us, after years of experimenting, the foundation for Battlemogs was there. We could now build a graphically rich world with a smooth gameplay. So the final part of the story is the, the final part for games has to do with story. So for us, we wanted each Mogwai to feel unique, its own traits, its own personality, its own physiology. So then we as players could see how these Mogwais grow and then test them out in battle. So instead of an NFT being just a simple add-on to the experience, it's something which is deeply integrated into the game. But this is a lot more about gaming, because essentially, Web3 games have the potential to be in the league of their own in terms of community, because that's what, what Web3 brings to gaming. So gaming companies know how important communities are to them, but they're simply stuck in business models of the past, where they see um, gamers as passive customers rather than active participants uh, in this ecosystem. So a Yuna network enables these gaming communities to be able to have a voice both in terms of the design, the gameplay, even the artwork of how this game will evolve. So at this point, the development studio should not be the sole, let's say, owner or author of a game. The community is what decides, the community decides how a game is going to evolve and how it's going to move forward. So what happens next is really up to us. So for us as a team, we decided to build towards that future. And so we were going to go on and work on Ayuna, which is, as I said, a single purpose blockchain to serve the gaming industry, ensuring full decentralization while maintaining um, a fluid user experience. Now, in May of this year, we successfully got our parachain at the 37th Kusama auction, and in just a few months, our sister network Bayun will be live and ready to game. But let's see what our heroes are up to. So at this point, let's say, fueled with a new sense of purpose, our team of MOGs, our heroes, hook up with a game development studio from Canada, GamePill, who have been going on gaming adventures for the past 10 years, and together, we set out to build battle mugs. So at this point, I would like to thank Polkadot for inviting us here, the Totsama community for voting us to give this presentation, and for you for joining us on this journey for our battle mugs. So, ladies and gentlemen, soon on Bayun, battle mugs. Legends speak of the Mogwai. Little is known of them. Whispers say they are magical or that they may be an advanced ancient alien race. It is known that Mogwai are born from the essence of their parents who abandon their eggs at birth. And that Mogwais never forget the face of those present during their hatching and form deep attachments. Some are born strong and wild. Some are born with patience and loyalty. Others are mischievous. Some even say demonic. Morgwais must prove themselves in battle to evolve. It is in the DNA to battle for dominance and supremacy.
Thank you. We just have a few questions here from the audience, actually. So, we see the Web3 community really hyped about gaming NFTs. Do we see the gaming industry and player base with the same excitement? Yes, we <laughs> should. I mean, gaming is a universal language. It, it, you know, technology has never been a barrier. Essentially, it's always sort of amplified the type of experience that we can get. But we always need to remember that what gamers care about is you know, the experience that they're going to get, not all of the technical things that go in the background. That's our job, sort of to make sure that we abstract the blockchain from the player and make sure that we can onboard developers in a friendly environment. Perfect. And they also want to know, will there be NFTs for the players, the, the characters you have in the game? What we can say is that there's going to be a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Probably some NFTs, but yeah, let's see where that goes. Wonderful. And last but not least, is Ayuna a DAO allowing the community to, to participate in the game development? That's the goal of Ayuna. So the, one of the things that we have done by creating our sister network, Bayoun, where that's where we see it more as an experimental phase or experimental environment, where we welcome as many developers and game developers, whether that's a single developer or a small studio, uh, yeah, to come and play around with our sandbox. And hopefully the idea is that eventually this is a player-governed ecosystem. Amazing. And that was the questions from the community. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Nicholas.